Hey Warhawks, Colonel Wilson uh, with uh, Chief Morgan here, episode 36 of Freeform Friday. It's great to be back with you. Chief, uh, have a good day. Had a great week. Uh, excited for the weekend. Uh, anything going on with you uh, this weekend? Uh, so this weekend, sir, you know, just uh, packing up for our TDY next week. But other than that, uh, still prepping the house and waiting for the family to come in. Awesome. So awesome. Yeah. So I know you got your washer and dryer set, taken care of. Mission <laughs> success is clean clothes. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. So as Chief mentioned, next week we're going to be TDY. We're headed to the Gathering of the Torch, uh, Air Education and Training Command. Uh, we're going to get to see all the other wing commanders, command chiefs, uh, NAF commanders, General Webb. Hey, it's going to be great. Uh, looking forward to being able to interact and bring back. Uh, whatever we, we learn for the rest of war, uh, the rest of the Warhawks team, so excited to go do that. But we got plenty going on around here. Unfortunately, one thing that's not going to be going on tomorrow, as we hoped, is the Spring Carnival. Uh, Major Selnick, uh, who is our POC, has done a great job getting that thing all together. I think we had something along the lines of 20 or 30 booths, but yeah. unfortunately, we're going to have a rain event, lightning, and so we just went ahead and we made the call to delay it on to uh, the following Saturday. So I know that might create put some in a bind and we really uh, apologize, but if we didn't do that, it was gonna get rained out. Uh, and because of CDC guidelines and the, the size of what we're trying to do, there's just no way we could move something like that indoors. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move it. I think it's the 8th of May, but we'll be pushing it out on our social media platforms. I'll put it in the Hawk Talk, we'll, but, uh, and we're, we're mentioning it here that it's, it's delayed. So thanks to everybody that's been a part of that. And uh, sorry, I know there's a lot of families that are really looking forward to it. Uh, just a delay of seven days, and we'll we'll come right back at it. So, so sir, I see this as a win. Not only are we taking in the everyone's uh, safety in mind uh, when we do this, but this is a good pre-event leading up towards Mother's Day too. So, it, it's an easy win for oh, a bunch man. of people too. That's yeah. right. We do that on Saturday and Sunday, the following Sunday. Yes, sir. The next day is Mother's Day. Yes, sir. Thanks for the reminder. Thanks yeah. for the reminder. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we mentioned weather because. Uh, because of this delay, but we had some pretty nasty weather this week <clears throat> that had some tornado warnings, yeah. specifically right here around, around Lackland, but I know it impacted the other uh, the other part of uh, San Antonio. Chief, you had some pretty good hail. I know there's yeah. everybody was talking about ping pong size hail, baseball size hail. You sent me a picture of the hail that you had out in, out in your neck of the woods. You guys fare okay? Yeah, we, we did okay. You know, uh, there's some uh, roof damage to some of the houses in the neighborhood, but uh, for the most part, everyone did all right out there. Well, we had the, you know, we had the emergency sirens going off here on the installation uh, that the Joint Base 502nd Air Base Wing was, was warning everybody that there was uh, air, uh, weather in the area. And then, lo and behold, we did, get, uh, we did get some rain, we got some wind, a little bit of hail here and there. Uh, but ultimately, the, the impacts were the next day, as we found we had, uh, we had a number of power outages. We had water uh, in some facilities. We had water go down. Uh, I wanted to say... Uh, uh, great work to our 341st training squadron yesterday. They lost water uh, out at Chapman Annex oh. where we have about 150 of our military working dogs. They had to consolidate them here. Fortunately, we have the kennel space back over here on the Lackland side. So that worked out very well, but they had to take some pretty expedient action to be able to deal with that. Uh, and then we also had a pa power outage to our CADAM range, right. uh, the 37 training support squadron, who was hosting a firing for Beast and our airmen yesterday. Uh, but they were able to put up light alls and they were able to get the mission done just like always and then the, uh, Lo and behold the power was restored uh, Yesterday by uh, by our partners in the 502nd CE uh, CE civil engineer group and CPS So that's just airmen innovating mm -hmm. finding ways to solve problems. That's what we are We're all, pro all problem solvers and getting the mission done bottom line. So great work We uh, but we also say hey, it's tis the season. We have to stay uh, vigilant when it comes to weather we focus a lot on co uh, continuity of operations here in this wing, and we'll continue to focus on severe weather events to make sure our mission can happen. Now we've had a winter storm and we've had a, a tornado within a couple months of each other. We're getting, unfortunately, we're getting pretty good at this at this whole thing. But uh, big hats off to our partners in the 502nd for response, and Definitely. to our own airmen, to our own airmen for for taking uh, evasive action there to 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 get that done, and move it on. Warhawk Solutions, we wanted to give a plug on Warhawk Solutions. We sent it out in the Hawk Talk. Warhawk Solutions, we've mentioned on this platform before, but just to reiterate, reiterate for anybody that has any concerns, uh, please go to Warhawk Solutions. Those elevate right to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief and I, we get those, we get to review those in concert with the rest of our command team and our public affairs office. So if there's something going on in the wing that you want to elevate quickly and you want to do it in an anonymous way, 
Please use Warhawk Solutions in the websites 37trw.af.mil. Again, 37trw.af.mil. We've had them coming in fast and furious. And between all the questions that we had at our recent commander's calls and now Warhawk Solutions, we are posting almost on a daily basis updated answers to questions. So please, uh, please keep them coming because you are our sensors. You're how, how we know what's going on in the wing, and this is one great mechanism to do it. So we'll keep after that. We're not going to get to every single question the same day, but please know they're in the, the queue of questions that we tee up. We're going to answer two of the questions that we received in Warhawk Solutions here in just a minute. So uh, please know that it is actually a viable, active platform that we use every single day, and it's a great way for you to up-channel information and up-channel questions. So. Yeah, and boss, if I could, you know, if you have a question, it might already be answered and already posted on there. So they stay on there for a good bit of time. Uh, so, you know, if you have a question and you don't feel like actually asking it, but you want to find the answer, that might be a good uh, place for you to go as well. So just check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes there's information that comes up that's a little bit sensitive. It might relate to one or two people or a group of people. Um, we're not going to be obviously be able to answer those for everybody to see. But just know if something like that comes up that we do, uh, we do follow up uh, with chain of command and we do follow up uh, directly on those issues. It's just we can't publish, obviously, answers on something that's a little bit sensitive or has Privacy Act information or something along those lines. So just be understanding of that as well. Uh, vaccine. A lot going on in the world of vaccine right now. The good news is that within our uh, within the 37 training wing for our permanent party personnel, you no longer are required to process your name as, uh, through our XP shop and then get on a list and get an appointment that way. They have enough supply now over at Wolford Hall that you're able to just either call in uh, during our tri to the Tricare line um, or the Camo line and just go in and, and schedule it that way, or you can do it, go in walk-in hours. And so walk-in hours have been posted. I don't unfortunately have them here, but what we'll do is we will post the walk-in hours on our social media, on our Facebook page. But the bottom line is there's enough supply. There is no reason that anybody who volunteers to get vaccinated uh, can't go ahead and get vaccinated. And again, you know, I've said it before, and I, I, I would uh, recommend you get vaccinated. Uh, I've got, been vaccinated. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's been proven effective at this point. Uh, anywhere, uh, well, I, you know, there's different statistics for different vaccinations, and you can go read about those yourself. But uh, we are seeing a pretty good impact within our wing in terms of our our permanent party personnel that are not um, that are not uh, uh, become, um, conducting or uh, uh, receiving the. Uh, vac I can't get it out. That aren't getting the virus. Yeah. So we've got vaccinated to a large degree, and we are not getting the virus. We're not testing COVID positive in large numbers now. Um, and so we then, because we've got our permanent party moving forward, we're starting to look at our trainees and our students in training over in our tech training schoolhouse in the near future. And we continue to partner with the 59th Medical Wing for that. But again, recommend you get vaccinated if you can. There's supply, sufficient supply. Just go through TRICARE, call the camo line, or go in during walk-in hours if you'd like to. But we, there's no longer a need for us to manage that list. Um, so that's great news. Yeah, that's awesome. I, and, and I agree with you, boss. I, I, I think everyone should at least take the time to read up on what the vaccinations are and how they work. And you know, while it's underneath a, an emergency use authorization, uh, it is voluntary. Uh, still, we, we as an enterprise across the Air Force and DOD are still trying to figure that out what that looks like in the future for all of us. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Maxwell, we used to say that the, the health of all of us depends on each of us. Um, so, you know, doing things like getting the vaccination is just helping everyone and, and keeping yourself healthy, so. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. good point, good point. So uh, we, uh, we moved from vaccines onto awards. We've had awards. some, as, yeah, you know, the logical transition uh, yeah. there. We, we've had some success this week. We've had some announcements to make. We've made some announcements internally, but we'll go ahead and announce them here on Freeform Friday. But one, uh, one great news uh, story here is uh, Mass Sergeant Brian Nelson from our 343rd Training Squadron, which is our Security Forces Academy and our Security Forces Schoolhouse, the largest AFSC schoolhouse in the, uh, in the, the Air Force, has been announced as Air Education and Training Command's 2021 Outstanding DOD Employee and Service Member with a Disability Award. So um, I think this marks uh, within the last couple of months, the fourth or fifth AETC level award that the Warhawks have won. But congratulations, Sergeant Nelson. We had him at our staff meeting this week. We congratulate him. 
he was obviously very excited about it. We're very excited about it. Um, it's just uh, it's just a blessing. So congrats to Sergeant Nelson for uh, again the uh, 2021 DoD Employee and Service Member with Disability Award. So congrats yeah, to him. Congrats. Great job. Great job. But we also had uh, not just some annual this coming in, but we have some quarterly this month. We do. Right? We do. Yeah. We have some to announce here. Yeah. This is a. I think we, we sent out a we sent out the note last night to internal audience, but we'll go ahead and announce our first quarter award winners for the 37th training wing and and uh, uh, in the junior enlisted category is Airman Shane Philly from the 322nd training squad and congratulations Airman Philly. Yeah, congrats. Uh, so for the non commissioned officer category, technical sergeant Cameron Figueroa from the 737th training group. Congratulations, Sergeant Figueroa. Senior non-commissioned officer, Senior Master Sergeant Kelly Jackson, our lead MTL from the 37th Training Group. Congratulations, yeah, Senior. Awesome. Uh, for company grade officer, Captain uh, Teresa Bakish from the 345th Training Squadron. Yeah, Teresa's been doing a great job. So um, Colonel McDaniel has been out on maternity leave, and so she's been filling in as the acting commander there for a while, and that's a huge squadron yeah, with a huge awesome. mission. So congratulations, Cap Bakish, Congrats. doing great work for us. Uh, field grade officer, Major Rebecca Belanger from the 637th ISS, our DLI team over there. Congratulations, Major Belanger. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, for the civilian non-supervisory Cat 1, uh, La Lakia Maple from the 345th TRIS. Yep, up there again, uh, Fort Lee. Awesome. Civilian non-supervisory Category 2, Mr. Jairo Yepes from the 343rd Training Squad. And congratulations, Jairo. Great work. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Civ Non-supervisory Cat 3, uh, the Sylvia White from the Wing Staff Agency. Congratulations. Congratulations. Civilian Supervisory Category 1, Mr. James Garza from the 637 Training Support Squadron. Again, DLI. DLI having a great time, having a good go at it this quarter. Yeah. Uh, Civ Supervisory Cat 2, uh, Mr. John Tristan from the 637 Training Support Squadron. Yeah, congratulations, yeah. John. We featured him at one of our commander's calls, I think our DLI commander's call. He's our head... Uh, Facility uh, facility manager uh, team uh, lead over there at DLI. Great work. And then finally, the civilian supervisory Cat 3, Miss Krista DeAndrea, our chief of public affairs here. Krista is killing it in the middle of everything, it seems like. She's doing great work for us. We're very blessed to have her. Wing staff agency. So congratulations to all our Warhawk yeah. quarterly award winners. Great work. Uh, we're excited to see your names. and. Um, we'll uh, we'll look forward to more great things here in the future from you. Yeah, and I, I tell you, boss, just walking around the wing and getting to know people uh, and seeing the high caliber of, of teammates we have, I know that these awards are very very competitive. Uh, so it's 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 awesome to see all these names that that, that one I've already met a lot of them, um, but two just to, I know that this was competitive and it, it was probably a very hard decision for all the board uh, members. So. Yeah, we want it to be hard. Absolutely. Yeah. We want it to be hard. And we know we talk about selective manning and we talk about the 37 training wing being pretty special place here because this is where we train the future of the Air Force and the future of the Department of Defense. So um, we have the best of the best. We're blessed to have it. And to your point, Chief, that makes for some very competitive yeah. uh, standoffs when it comes to these awards. So great work. So uh, I think I think we are down to Q&A time. Uh, I think we've talked about everything else that yeah. we had. Uh, we got well before we do that we've got may coming up and there's some uh, we talked about april april was the month of the military child yep. uh, i think uh before that was march march was women uh women's history month so we've got some great things coming up may the 4th chief yeah. that's star that's, wars day star coming. wars day yeah. may the 4th be with you coming up yeah. uh teacher appreciation day uh in may we've got nurses appreciation day we're Teacher Appreciation Day is very meaningful to a schoolhouse like us, yeah. uh, where we, where that's what we are. Uh, our wing is a, an uh, um, uh, educa area education training command is ultimately we're all teachers to some extent, and so that's a big one. You mentioned Mother's Day coming up on Mother's May night. Don't yes, uh, we would be remiss not to talk about Cinco de Mayo, little Cinco de Mayo, here in uh, San Antonio. That's a, obviously a very big deal with our Hispanic population, our Hispanic population, our wing, our IAF, our Inter-American Air Forces Academy, which focuses on Latin America. Cinco de Mayo is gonna be huge. Uh, National Police Day, or National Police Week coming up. We know that we are the schoolhouse for the yeah. all things Defenders, 343rd Training Squadron. That's a very big deal. Armed Forces Day on May the 15th, and then 31st of May Memorial Day. Man, yeah, but, May's packed. Yeah, and I believe uh, the May 31st is a Monday, so there's an AEPC Family Day uh, on the Friday before, so it's a four-day weekend coming up. Now we're so, talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. 
Yeah, even Brittany smiled on that one. Yes, so that's goodness. All right, Brittany, uh, we've got a couple questions uh, here from Warhawk Solutions that we'll go ahead and answer if you wouldn't mind mention, uh, mention them. Yes, sir. The first question is: If a person wins a wing level award, what are the next levels that the package will be com will compete at? Is there a published submission scheduled for the next level awards? Yeah. So I'll take this one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So. Uh, the next level, of course, would be the numbered Air Force, or in our case, the, the second Air Force. Um, uh, and, and those are for the uh, annual awards only. I don't believe we do quarterly awards outside the wing. That's right. Right. Um, uh, and, and it also takes away the functional awards. would go mostly along the functional lines. Um, so they may go to like the second Air Force A4 or a specific directorate. Um, but uh, yeah, so it goes up to the second Air Force uh, for the annuals. Um, and it's highly competitive because then you're uh, going for the best of the best from all of the different second, second Air Force wings. Uh, and then if it competes well there, then it'll go up to the MATCHCOM level. Um, and then that's when we start talking about Airmen of the Year, the 12 AOI, those kind of uh, highly competitive. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think part of the question, uh, I published think, schedule. Yeah, published yeah. schedule. And, and we have that. And I, I, thanks to our CAG, we do a pretty good job about publishing that schedule in advance. One thing I think that we can do, honestly, you know, full full disclosure, is we can communicate back to the, those that have won, that have won and been selected, and those that have not. Yeah. Unfortunately, in a situation like with any award, and especially we talk about competition, there's going to be competition, and so not everybody is obviously going to win or win at the same level. Some mm -hmm. will go up; they'll be selected functionally, like Sergeant Nelson was, mm -hmm. you know, for a, kind of a, one of those types of awards, or like you mentioned in the 1208Y, they'll be selected at the second Air Force level. Uh, or at the wing level, but not everybody is obviously going to win the same. We can't, right. you know, we can't, uh, we can't ensure that, and, and nor should we try. But just the fact that you're nominated uh, is a very big deal. It speaks so, volumes. Yeah. yeah, it speaks volumes yeah. about what you're doing, and uh, so just keep doing great things. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Uh, I know that what we do around here isn't driven by awards. What we do around here is driven by our passion for our mission and mm -hmm. the passion for our students and the passion for our trainings, and so. That's the goodness, and if awards happen to fall out of that, then man, all the better, all the better. Definitely. All right. We yes, sir. Another question, Brittany. Yes, sir. The second question is: What are the Air Force regs regarding email signature blocks? Is there one for each group or squadron, or just one for the wing? Yeah. So the Tongue and Quill addresses this, and, and those that aren't familiar with the Tongue and Quill, this has been around for years. It started out, I think, as an Air Force handbook or pamphlet or something along those lines, which which provided guidelines. Uh, it's now an AFI AFI thirty three 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 seven. I could go into the specifics. The bottom line is, you know, your signature block should have obvious information. It should have your name, your duty title, your office symbol, your contact information, those types of things. But a lot of people will end their duty title with some kind of quote that means that's very meaningful to them. And you know what, I would say, um, I, I would say while it's not mentioned in the AFI, let's just use a level of common sense here. I always, when, when in doubt, I go back to common sense mm -hmm. and what I think the, the, the collective would say, and I think the collective are probably okay with you putting a quote in your office symbol, but if, um, but if it's a quote that could be divisive, could be outside of the, the norm of your traditional duties, could be outside of the norm of building a spree de corps and morale within your unit, uh, take a look at that. Just make sure that it's not something that's, it's about your unit, it's about the collective good. It's not about you know you and would be divisive. That's what I would say to that, and I think that's what the the question was really trying to get after is we don't want to you know it, there's there's a lot of things to talk about and you know um, we, we talk in this this day and age about being offended and things like that you know let's just let's just use common sense when it comes to it and um, let's let's post things that are in good taste and good nature in our signature blocks so um, just a just a realist perspective on things trying to be pragmatic about it so um, that's my thought um, you know, and, and for those that are reading it, you know, try and understand uh, the other person that's that's got it in their signature block. We'll just be understanding of each other. We've had a lot of discussions on diversity and inclusion, yeah. uh, and, and that's all comes back to having a common understanding of each other and being acceptant, acceptant and tolerant of each other. So let's let's try not to be divisive on that. Yeah, and if I could just add, you know, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes sometimes the intent of the sender uh, is highly divergent from the impact of the receiver. Right, so what I mean to say may not be how you understand it. So I think conversations based off of understanding, like, hey, what did you mean by that? That's right. Right, and just have a conversation with somebody where if it comes down to, you know, like, hey, I saw something on your signature block that I, I really kind of struck with me that in a not a good way. You know, a, a baseline conversation will probably help everyone understand um, on both sides. 
that, that communication is a two-way street, right? Yeah, it is. Like, yeah. so, so I, what you communicate is one thing, but what, what you can't control when you communicate something is what someone else receives. Right. Right? You can try. You can communicate and articulate as best you can, but at the end of the day, you can't, you can't control the receiver and, and the receiver's end, so just be aware of that. I mean, so. Hey, yeah. thanks, Chief. Uh, this is your second episode of the books. Okay. We have the good fortune. We're going out. We're sitting on a panel yep. with our senior non-commissioned officers here later this morning. Uh, that's pretty exciting stuff. So I look forward to, look forward to doing that. And we're going to get out and we're going to recognize some folks right after this as well for great work in our Warhawks of the Week. Yeah. So look forward to doing that. Thanks, thanks for the, the second week in the chair, Wingman, and look forward okay. to many more. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Friday's a good day. You know, you, we get to sit and chat for a little bit. And then we get to go out and recognize and spend some time with people. And yeah, makes, makes for a good end of the week. All right. Yeah. Well, everybody, have a great weekend. This is episode 36 in the book. Warhawks train away. Have a great weekend.